Hey everybody, welcome to Contra Thoughts. It's Halloween time, or Fall Festival, or Reformation Day. We're gonna look at it, coming up next. All right, Halloween is here. It is here. And whether you like it, or hate it, or just tolerate it, it's here. And we're going to be looking at a few different things, talking about Halloween. I know lots of people have talked about it over the years, many Christians, pastors, writers, bloggers, and so on. Uh, I'm going to bring, hopefully, some new spin to it. Of course, this channel is contramundum, against the world, but for the world, for the sake of the world. And so that's what I want to help you see and maybe look at Halloween a little bit differently. Maybe you're not going to celebrate it, or you used to celebrate it, and now you won't. Or maybe you won't celebrate it, and now you will. Uh, I don't want to be squishy in, in middle uh, either. I'll tell you what we celebrate uh, and how we do it at the end of the video as well. So it's Halloween, right? And there's basically three views that most Christians will take, right? One is, of course, embrace Halloween and just say, yeah, whatever. It's the world. It's not that big of a deal. It's just candy. It's just this. It's parties. People get dressed up. Yeah, so what? There's a little bit of zombies. There's skeletons. Or, you know, It's not that big of a deal. I mean, I'm not worshiping anything. I'm not doing that big of a thing. It's just, it's just a Whatever. The world does it. I want to, you know, hang out with my neighbors, whatever. You know, maybe you're not going to strew dead body parts on your lawn or sacrifice black cats, but, you know, other stuff, it's fine. Uh, of course, there's a second view of totally rejecting it, acting like there's only 30 days in your October calendar, not 31, and just say it doesn't even exist at all. Or lastly, there's <clears throat> a certain baptism you might do and say, well, and yeah, we're going to do a fall festival, and we'll, we'll, say, we'll act like it's Halloween, but we won't use the word Halloween. Uh, or if you're a super Christian like me, we'll do Reformation Day. Just kidding. Uh, but fall festivals, you know, and it's a certain thing. Yeah, candy, and maybe you'll trick-or-treat a little bit, but it's not going to be that much. Uh, and you're certainly not doing any dead body parts or black and orange and cats and witches and everything else. So there's really kind of three spots that most Christians will fall into. Well, are we just supposed to pick? Are we just supposed to kind of like, well, I mean, I guess, or, or just do what we did growing up? Because I grew up doing Halloween. I'm in the 90s, 90s kid, grew up doing Halloween. And maybe I was 13 or 14 when I stopped. But now there's grown adults who trick-or-treat. Oftentimes, it's very associated with uh, the homosexual community. In fact, I living in Los Angeles for a number of years. Uh, a couple times before I was a believer, I went down to West Hollywood, which is basically the gay capital next to San Francisco uh, in America especially in California, and it's flamboyantly to the hilt, right? People are drunk, people are high, people are wearing next to nothing, bright clothes, and so on. And so it's not an innocent day by any means. Now, it might be for you. You might have a three-year-old who dresses up like ladybugs and princesses, and it's not a big deal. <clears throat> but is it for everybody? And I want us to think. I want you to think, and let's think together and rationalize and push and look at it and examine what we are doing here. I mean, it is All Saints Day, right? It's All Hallows Eve. All, 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 you know, so there's hollow, that means saint, that means holy, uh, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, as the KJV says. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's, just, it's mostly like a Christian holiday, right? Or, I mean, sort of? Well, let's look a little bit further. Because you have to look and say, well, where do the witches come from, and the ghouls and the goblins? The blood, the gore, the ghosts, all this stuff, it's not neutral, right? These things are not neutral. Don't be an idiot. Be against these things and think, don't just decorate with whatever because, well, you know, other people do it. Well, that's a terrible reason to do anything. Other people are doing it. I should do it too. Don't let your brain fall out. Be a believing believer. <laughs> be a Christian. Be against the world, but for the world. Be, be of Christ and, and pushing against every thought and lofty philosophy raised up against the knowledge of Jesus. So before we ask ourselves or pick one or say, oh, you're a heretic, Richard, you're ridiculous, I can't believe you're making this video, or say, oh my goodness, you're right, I should never ever do anything again, Snickers is the devil, Reese's is the devil, pumpkins are Satan, and so on, I want us to look at it a little bit more. Halloween, of course, is not innocent, I think most people know that, at least it's his, its history. Uh, it <clears throat> comes from the Celtic festival, Samhain or Hein, uh, however you say it, mostly uh, over a thousand years ago. It's a Celtic festival that was at the end of summer seeing winter come in. Now, there was all sorts of sexual deviancy, human and animal sacrifice, and many other things going on there. That's kind of a big deal. Now, we also need to look and say, well, just because something has a bad history doesn't mean it automatically is bad. 
right? Like Henry VIII was Episcopalian. He started the Church of England, therefore Anglican, right? I can't be an Anglican. Well, I'm not going to be an Anglican for several reasons, not because of King Henry, but a beginning isn't everything, right? And so we need to know that. But we can also look in Scripture and say that Scripture isn't neutral in the matter either. 1 Samuel 28, what does Saul do? Well, the witch of Endor. Now, I would contest that he's actually convening with some sort of demonic power, uh, some sort of entity that is outside of time and therefore able to share information. I would say that this happens a lot too. I did a video uh, up here you can see on TikTok, uh, Todd Friel comments on it and how people basically are getting different um, personality, the personality disorder, and they're switching and they're a legion and they're a, a system of people and so on. Many people are probably doing this just for attention, but some people are doing it because they're actually doing it, which is crazy and demonic. 1 Corinthians 10.20 also says, I do not imply the pagans of sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons. So Paul tells us, don't be participants with demons. Many people from the ancient culture, not so much today, at least in the America and the West, came out of demonic entities, demonic worship, Diana or, or um, Aphrodite or, or Zeus worship or, or Apollos and so many other fake gods. Now, I would contest again, this is another video for another time, but many of these Greek and Roman gods, they're not just made up fictional imaginations, but they are spiritual entities that would basically convene with people and promise certain things. Uh, I think that happens even today, though, maybe much more behind closed doors. We can see this in the occult, the OCC, ULT, and uh, other places as well. But it happens all over the world uh, on a much broader scale. Usually they'll say they're spirits, they're a healing spirit, or they're a blessing spirit, or something like that. But we must not ignore pagan things only. I'm not saying we're going to embrace them, but we must not ignore them and say, well, it doesn't really matter, it's not a big deal, that's of no use to me. However, at the same time, do you do things on Monday? Do you work on Thursday or go to church on Sunday? Well, all these days, of course, are days based on pagan stuff, right? Sunday was when we were supposed to worship the sun, or at least some people. Monday, moon day, right? Lunas is the Spanish version. Well, what's Luna? <laughs> uh, but moon in Spanish. Of course, Thursday is for Thor, and Friday, I believe it's Freya as well. Wednesday is Woden and so on. These are kind of like a mix of both Scandinavian and, and uh, Norwegian Norwegian gods. Scan it's really Scandinavian, not Norwegian, I guess. So it's like, well, we can't, okay, so we can't, so what are we supposed to do then? Because I'm not, I'm not worshiping the moon on Monday when I'm going to work or whatever, uh, or worshiping, I'm worshiping the son of God, you know? I'm not worshiping the actual sun that's 93 million miles away, the ball of light in the sky uh, on Sunday. So, you know, what's the big deal, Richard? Just, just, well, hang on, let's keep going. As one said, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite guys, Mark Coppinger, I interviewed him a while back. Beginnings are not nothing, but they are not everything. He said that in another video talking about Halloween as well. They're not nothing, but they're not everything, okay? So we can have some broad principles. And again, if you're just going to dress up and do a few things, eh, okay, I guess so. But why are you doing those things? Just because the world does those things? Because it makes sense? Because it's an evangelistic opportunity? Possibly. Uh, but many people will say, wow, you're just pushing against, you're going to push against Halloween because it's demonic, but you, you love Christmas. Christmas was based on Saturnalia, the Roman uh, pagan holiday. Well, yeah, sort of true, you know, the evergreen trees and so on and so forth. So why do we do these things? Just because of tradition? I mean, I got, I like Christmas trees. Um, don't really do Santa. I mean, that's, you know, based on the third century guy, St. Nicholas, who punched Arius in the face. That's a good Christmas story uh, for denying the de deity of Jesus, but... Again, that's another video I'll probably make next month. But many occult worship and demons are real. And there's many witches, former witches and, and warlocks and so on that have come to Christ. And you can find their videos. In fact, I'll probably put some in the description of saying they love that Christians embrace this holiday. Just absentmindedly, just totally, you know, their brain falls out. So again, I want to say, why are you doing this? If you do it, if you don't do it, why are you doing that? Why do you see these things as a problem or as not a problem? We experienced some of this in California when we adopted a cat. Adopted, dumb word. We picked up a cat at the uh, orphanage for animals. And it was black. And I had a black cat. I got my grandma a black cat like, I don't know, 18, 19 years ago. He's since died and so is she. Um, but he was a great cat. And so my wife and I, we were about to get married and 
I don't know why we didn't wait, but we didn't wait. And or maybe it was after we got married. I can't remember. Anyway, it was a black cat. This was a number of years ago. We couldn't get the cat in October. We had to wait until after because they did not give out black cats during the month of October. It might have even been September as well, but it certainly was October. Why? Well, because they would find animal sacrifices and remains in random places. So they're like, well, we're not going to give this out anymore, right? Because people were sacrificing black cats. Cats have all sorts of, I mean, the Egyptians have worshipped cats for centuries, thousands of years. Uh, and cats have a certain allure for certain people. Well, they, they worship and sacrifice black cats. Well, let's, okay, kind of weird, kind of a big deal. Like, well, I'm not doing that, so who cares? I just want my kid to get some Reese's and some Butterfingers and, you know, maybe some of those crappy wax candies, you know, the orange and the black ones wrapped in the wax paper. Those chewy ones, like who eats those? Terrible. Do they still make those? Drop a comment if they still do, I don't know. But we saw this in California, and we've seen other things as well. We all have. But all that aside for a moment, I want us to then figure out and look at a little bit more and say, why am I doing this? Because Halloween is one of the biggest holiday, actually second behind Christmas, with four to six billion dollars of revenue generated each year. Four to six billion. Now, that's from an article from Al Mohler that I'll cite and I'll put down in the, uh, the full description, uh, full article in the description. But dressing up, you know, again, it's not a big deal, but adults do it. And scantily clad adults, generally, you know, generally the, the women look like hookers and the dudes are dressed up like something else. But there's often this celebration of death and, and zombies and, I mean, zombies, ghosts, ghouls, witches, vampires, all these things are death related. Now, why would we participate? We're told to not convene with demons, to participate with demons. Don't, don't let your brain fall out and think, well, you know, it's just not that big of a deal. This is an opportunity to whatever. Eh, maybe, maybe. If you can do that, again, it's mostly a conscience issue. Don't, don't think I'm just, you know, uh, hitting it on the head and saying, well, you're just this, you're just this, you're just this. I can't believe you're, you know, you're not even saved. You're a sinner, whatever. I'm not saying that. What I want you to do, if you fully embrace Halloween, if you're number one, for example, Why? And drop a comment. Tell me why. Why, why do you do this? What's, what's the benefit? I've seen a few uh, people who are like, yeah, I'm pro-Halloween. Halloween's awesome. Well, that's a terrible word to use for awesome. Uh, God is awesome. And I'm going to draw the line there and be particular with that because awe-inspiring, awesome, full of awe is, I mean, we just dilute words and we just make things so, it's just, it's just bad. We're so casual. Right? And we're so lazy with so many things that we just kind of let things, ah, whatever, it's no big deal. Same from that uh, Mueller article. He cites historian Nicholas Rogers saying, Halloween is currently the second most important party night. Notice that. Important party night in North America. In terms of its retail potential, only second to Christmas. This commercialism fortifies its significance as a time of public license and custom designed opportunity to have a blast. Regardless of its spiritual complications, Halloween is big business, end quote. It is. It very much is. Rogers further states that Halloween is a transgressive holiday that allows for bizarre and elements from the dark side to enter the mainstream. Right? So walking around with blood and, I mean, again, don't be stupid. Don't think because you've never experienced these things of a human sacrifice or a mock human sacrifice or uh, people necromancy. You know, what does Saul do, King Saul, going to the Witch of Endor in 1 Samuel 28? This is real stuff. And because you've sanitized everything in your world, you think, ah, it's not that big of a deal. Now, again, if your son wants to dress up like a baseball player and your daughter like a ladybug and your baby like a little cow or whatever, cute, fine, that's cute. And you just go around and get some Snickers and some, you know, random candies and you go back after an hour of being outside and talking to your neighbors. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. But again, what, why are we doing it? And how are we associating it? What are we showing to the world? Do we say the world, it's fine? Just like I would say, and I've gone back and forth on this, I would say drinking alcohol is generally fine. Getting drunk? No, it's not. The Bible says explicitly, no, you shouldn't get drunk. But there's plenty of people who have very weak consciences when it comes to alcohol. Was communion wine? Of course it was. It was not grape juice. Sorry, though I'm a Baptist, very much so, convictionally and everything else. It's, but are we going to have wine? At our Baptist church? No, we're not. Because some people, especially when that tradition, it's not okay, right? And so we have to be sensitive to other people as well. So some people, if you have a friend who, oh, I don't know, used to be a witch, and she sees you trick-or-treating, 
And that's when she would sacrifice dogs and cats to some random god, Diana or whatever. She's going to be like, excuse me? <laughs> what, what, are you, what you doing? Oh, we're just, you know, we're just, just not a big deal. We're just getting some candy. Well, why not get candy at your friend's house? Or, or rather at uh, the store. In fact, that's what we do. We just get candy. We watch a movie. And the kids eat as much candy as they want. We'll buy a bunch of various candies. Sometimes we'll get it from Trader Joe's because it doesn't have the corn syrup and all the extra junky colors and things like that that we try not to eat anyway. But have as much candy as you want. The candy is not the issue, right? Uh, and dress up as a costume. His son dresses up as a costume. I mean, he just got a Hulk hand-me-down, a Hulk costume, and a Star Wars guy. And he's got a Batman and some other stuff too. Cool, great. Nothing wrong with dressing up. That's fine. Make-believe, imagination. Praise God. That's cool. That's what we do. But why do we be like, well, and those are the reasons. We'll do that 364 other days out of the year. Why the heck not? Um, then you diminish its stranglehold on you and say, this is just another day. Not a big deal. But we have a deep fascination. And that's the interesting thing. And that's what uh, Roger says earlier. The bizarre elements enter into the mainstream. Right? Women who are normally, you know, fairly modest are going to dress basically in their underwear. And I've seen it more than once. You know, but they've got the blood dripping down. Well, I'm a vampire. I'm going to eat your flesh? I'm going to eat human flesh? Or I'm this undead thing? I'm a zombie. I'm a Frankenstein. I'm a this, I'm a that. Like, it's, it's bizarre. It's very strange. But are we thinking Jesus triumphed over triumphed over death? He put death to death, right? He killed it. In fact, 1 Corinthians 15, Oh, death, where is your victory, Paul says. Oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is what? Sin. Sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Knowing that the toil is not in vain in the Lord. Your toil is not in vain, ladies and gentlemen. Friends, it's not in vain. If you give up Halloween, it's all right. If you embrace it, if you're not doing it, now you're like, actually, it could be an evangelistic opportunity. We've done it for a while, little baggies of candy with a gospel tract in there as well. Or you write a little note in there. Or you have somebody come over. You have a party. You have a Reformation party, which... Personally, I would advocate over all of them because you're still able to dress up, you're still able to eat, and you're having this clean, fun get-together that's basically set apart. Now, the Reformation, which happened also on October 31st, was something, you know, 500 plus years ago. The Celtic Sam, Sam, Sam Hain and other holidays precede that. However, we can co-opt it, right? And I think that's probably the best baptizing of, of these days. Um... Anyway, that's my personal preference. But this is not the same thing as arguing against Christmas, right? So some people look, well, you argue against Halloween, but you fully embrace Christmas. What's the big deal? Well, again, uh, the ancient festival of All Hallows' Eve is not universally understood, number one, by Christians that that is an actual uh, incarnation and celebration of Christ. Further still, Albert Muller states again in his article, the coming of Halloween is a good time for Christians to remember that evil spirits are real and the devil will seize every opportunity to try and trumpet his own celebrity. Perhaps the best response to the devil at Halloween is that off, uh, offered by Martin Luther, the great reformer, as I just mentioned. The best way to drive out the devil, if he will not yield to texts of scripture, is to jeer and flout him for he cannot bear scorn, end quote. So can we celebrate Halloween? Yeah, probably, I guess, if you want. I'm not going to. We're not going to do it. We haven't done it for years. We did it with our youngest, she's 11, until she was, I don't know, two or three. And then after that, it was kind of like, no, we don't need to do this. We'll get the candy. We'll do the, we'll watch the movie. We'll stay up late. Um, and it's just, it's fine. It's great. People miss out. No big deal. I worked at a place uh, for a while. Worked at Trader Joe's, actually, grocery store. Uh, for a number of years, and people would say, oh, Halloween, blah, blah, blah. Well, we don't do Santa either, because, I don't know, Santa's a lie. I don't, I don't lie to my children. I don't like lying to my children. And so we don't do Santa. We've never done Santa, and I have no problem with that either. Now, some people will say that. Well, I turned out fine. I had Halloween. I had Santa. Well, so did I. But did I, quote, unquote, turn out fine? I mean, I guess, but there's no way to say Richard without Santa and Halloween and Richard with Santa and Halloween. Maybe I'd be better off. 
if I didn't have Santa and Halloween. No, I'm not scorning my parents and uh, running them over the coals or anything. But we have to be thinking Christians, right? We have to be against the world for the sake of the world. That's why I'm making this video. That's why I do this channel. Uh, because I want to examine things and look at things and say, listen, whether it's in the church, it's in the culture, it's in the arts, it's in politics, economics, whatever, why do we do what, the, what we do? Is this glorifying to Christ? Is this helpful for humanity? Is this for human flourishing? Are we better off or worse off or just kind of whatever? And examining things based on scripture, right? Not my own opinions. This isn't my channel for my own opinion's sake or trumpeting any of that. Now we can use again broad principles, right? We can look at 2 Corinthians, or excuse me, Colossians 2.16. Therefore let no one judge you by eat or drink with regard to a feast or a new moon or a Sabbath. Right? Yeah. And again, we have to adhere to scripture. We can't, well, this one, eh, I don't know. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the body that casts it belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone who delights in false humility and worship of angels disqualify you with speculation about what he has seen. Such a person is puffed up without bias by his unspiritual mind. He has lost connection to the head, meaning Christ, from whom the whole body supported and knit together by its joints and ligaments grows as God causes it to grow. Colossians 2.16 and following. Don't hold, right? And if somebody wants to do that, great. Okay. You want to celebrate Halloween? Drop a comment. Tell me why you celebrate Halloween. Or tell me why you don't. Or tell me why you hate it or love it or just kind of like whatever. Tell me what you do. I really appreciate that. Um, I hope you find this well. And uh, if you did enjoy this video, go ahead and like it. It really does help out the uh, algorithm. And uh, share it, comment. The system likes both comments and likes thumbs ups. So if you wouldn't mind doing that, that would really help me out and get the message out to more people. The goal here, again, as I've said, is helping people be against the world for the sake of the world. We'll see you on the next video.